Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up an NS Array controller to an NS Table View. We're going to create a simple Cocoa application or Mac application without writing a single line of code. Check this out. Today I'd like to show you how to bind an array controller to a table view in a simple Cocoa application. And this is a feature that allows us to use core data and not write a single line of code, uh, yet update our user interface and save our data. That is an amazing feature called Cocoa Bindings, and this is something I would really like to see in iOS. Sadly, we haven't got it yet, but we have got it for Mac development in Cocoa, and here's how we're going to create that. First, we're going to create a simple Cocoa application with core data. The Cocoa applications don't come with templates like we used to from iOS, so this is kind of a bare bones approach here. We're going to add an entity to our core data model and create a subclass from it. And then we're going to drag a table view and an array controller into our nip file, which is kind of like the um, storyboard. Then we're going to bind the array controller to the manage object context, which is already provided by the app delegate. And then we're going to bind the table view to the array controller. And that then lets us update data in a graphical user interface and save it straight in core data and vice versa also retrieve values that are then displayed in the graphic interface without a single line of code. I can't emphasize this enough. The tools we're going to use for this are Xcode 5.1, actually Xcode 5.1.1 to be exact, and the app's going to run on Mountain Lion as well as Mavericks. We're going to start with a brand new Xcode project here. Under OS X, we're going to select the Cocoa application. Sadly, not a Sprite Kid game. We're going to stick with Cocoa application. And let's call it Bindings Test, perhaps. Down here at the bottom, make sure you select Use Core Data, because that's one of those very important things we're going to use here. Hit Next and save it somewhere where you can find it. I'm going to create a Git repo so I can share it with you on GitHub. Since we've chosen to use core data we've already got in our app delegate, we already have a persistent store coordinator, manage object model, and manage object context. We don't have a fetch results controller because that's an iOS only feature, so we don't have that here. And it turns out we don't actually need it. We also have a core data model here, and there's nothing in it. This is a bit like the iOS utility app, it comes basically with nothing. So in order for core data to save something, first thing we need to do is add an entity. I'm going to call mine event, and I'm going to make it extremely simple here. I'm going to create one attribute, which is going to be a title. The attribute is of a string value. We could add many more here. I'm going to stick with one because it's ultra simple, and you know I just want to show you how to do this without any code. Up here under Editor, Create NS Managed Object Subclass will create a little file for us, a super simple event class. This is exactly what we need. Just choose the defaults, and here we go. Event, H, and M. Not much going on there. Turns out we're not even going to touch it. Very exciting. There's one thing that we could do here in the model in our attribute. We could provide a default value. Perhaps we're just going to call it value. That's not really necessary. It's just so that we see something in the interface as soon as we add a record. Let's turn our attention to the main menu dot nip file. Select window down here, and then that brings up our application window. And this is where we're going to start dragging two properties in. On the left-hand side, just so that you know, if you see something like that, with no explanation whatsoever, then this is the document outline. You can open that here, and then that turns the view into this. It's a bit of a space-saving thing here, but sometimes it doesn't really show you what's going on here. So I've got the screen space. I'm going to open this up. Down here on the bottom right, you have all these beautiful elements. And we're going to select one that is the NS table view. There. It's in fact it's an NS table view in an NS scroll view. So we're going to see what that means in a second. I'm going to drag that in and put it here on the left hand side. Make it a bit bigger. 
I'm going to leave some room here because I'm going to add a text field in a second. Notice here that the table view sits inside a scroll view, inside a clip view, in, and that's where the table view actually is. So if you wanted to select this, you go one, two, three, that selects the table view. So make sure you're on the right one here. Columns, I'm just going to need one column, so I'm going to trim that to one. And select the column and drag it over to the right a little bit further, yeah, perhaps like that. Cool. Okay, that's the table view. Now we're going to need another little friend who is called the NS Array Controller. And that's this guy here, the green little bubble with three blue things in there, it's three blue squares in there. That's the Array Controller. Many of the objects in Coco are bindings compatible, so the array controller binds an array to a graphical element and vice versa. But you have other options, so as you start exploring bindings, it's going to be a hell of a journey. It's amazing. We're going to use the NS array controller here, and we're going to drag that not into here. We're going to drag that over here. I like to put mine underneath the font manager here, and there we go. With the array controller still selected, Head over to the right-hand side and click the Bindings Inspector tab. This brings up a few scary options here, and I always forget what I need to do here. It's not actually that difficult. Uh, there's, there's two things. The first thing, once you're on the Bindings Inspector, head over to Parameters under Manage Object Context. An Array Controller is a class that has a lot of parameters, but we really only need to bind two of them. We need to tell the array controller what our managed object context is and where we can find that. So tick the bind to box and from the drop down select app delegate. That makes perfect sense, right? We want to bind one end of the array controller to the app delegate specifically under model key path. We're looking for the self managed object context because that's really where the array controller can find all our objects. Leave the controller key path blank and the value transformer blank as well. We don't need that. So now the array controller knows he needs to look in the app delegate self manage object context for objects, but he doesn't quite know which objects to look at because our manage object context could have several entities. Uh, we need to tell him which entity to look at. And we do that up here in that little um, attributes inspector. Under Object Controller, you find it can either function on a class or on an entity name. Because we're using Core Data, we need to select the latter, so Entity Name, and just tell him the entity, which in our case was Event. One other thing we need to do under Prepares Content, we want to select that. If we do that, the Array Controller will fetch all our content from the core data stack. So this is a little bit like what a fetched results controller perhaps would do in iOS. This is what the array controller can do for us here, if you tick that box. If you don't, then you'd have to issue that command manually. We're not going to do that. A tick box is all we want. That is the array controller sorted. Let's have a look at the table view. You can either select it from here, or you can select it from here. If you do it from the graphic interface, you click one two, three, four times until you get to the table column. We're not going to bind the array controller to the table view or to the clip view or to the bordered scroll view. We need to select the column. Make sure you're on the column and again head over to the bindings inspector. This little symbol, I don't even know what that looks like, what that is, but that's the bindings inspector. And here we just need to tell the column what value to display. So up here under value, open this and tell it to bind it to the array controller. By default, it comes up with the controller key of arranged objects. That's exactly what we want. But we also need to specify what property needs to be displayed in that column. Uh, so the model key path here is important, and we're gonna we we only have one property, which is title. And since we've created subclasses, Xcode knows this and brings up our title property here for us. So title is good. So quick recap. The array controller looks at our app delegates manage object context, grabs all the events there are, 
and just has them as almost like fetched objects in its class. It's an array. We're telling the table view, hey, look at the array controller and let's display that array of event objects and specifically the title property in our table view. So far, so good. Right now, though, we don't have anything to display and there doesn't seem to be an obvious way to add data into this thing. So let's make that happen. Again, no code. Scroll to the top and find the first button you find here. Push button, NS button, that's perfect. I'm going to drag one in. I'm going to put that maybe down here, maybe down here. And let's drag another one in. These things will allow us to add records and remove records. Make it a bit bigger, it's totally pretty. And now we're going to drag from that button, hook it up to an action, control drag, to our array controller and select the add action. You've guessed it, the same is going to happen with the remove action. Control drag from the remove button to the array controller, let go and select remove. So these two buttons also speak to the array controller and they will allow us to add and remove records literally into core data without writing a single line of code. Is that cool or what? So the app will already work. If we'd run this now, we can add and remove records here. Let's see if I'm right. Let's run it. So can you tell which one's the fake and which one's the real? <laughs> Very funny. So you add and we have value. This is the default value we've defined here. Add again, add another value. Add as many as you like. Remove as many as you like as well. But even better, we can double click this and say uh, change this. Add another one, say four. So if we now stop the app and run it again, nothing's there. That's probably because there was no save action associated with this, so nothing gets saved automatically unless, of course, we make that happen. Let's make it happen. In here, let's find the menu up here. You can either find the menu here or you go into the main menu here and then uh, open each menu item up here. It's much easier to do it under File and Save. And there it is. Let's hook up this save action, again via Control drag to the app delegate this time and hook it up as the save action. So this now means that we can call the save command and our object context will be saved. Let's see if I'm right. There, let's add a few values here. There. And now we're coming up to our file menu and just hit save. And now we stop it, start it again. All our values are back. Is that cool or what? Let me show you one other thing that we can do totally without code. As I said, many objects in Cocoa are bindings compatible. So rather than us double clicking into a cell, let's hook up a little text field here. And that allows us to enter values here more easily. So let's come down here and find a text field. Uh, there's a label here and there's a text field just next to it. NS text field, perfect. Let's drag that over here. Make it bigger. It's not the prettiest app, I give you that, but hey, it's one of those things. With it selected, we don't need to hook it up to anything. All we need to tell this text field in the bindings inspector, which is incidentally still open, we just need to bind that value property also to the array controller. This time we're going to bind it to the selection. That's whatever is selected in the table view. And the model key path here is also going to be title. That should be that. Let's run it and see if I'm right. Look at that. So now the selected value from the table view gets displayed in the text field and is editable. 
This is a great demonstration of what bindings are capable of. It's a two-way street without any what Apple call glue code. So you don't have to write methods that set a value, take it from there, set it elsewhere, and then if you move the cursor somewhere else, then it takes the value and sets it elsewhere. Cocoa bindings do that all for us. And as you get into Cocoa bindings and look at them more, it makes your Mac development so much easier. I've made this project available on GitHub for you to have a peek at in case you can't remember what are these scary properties you need to set. Um, it's called Bindings Demo and it's on github.com. I'm on github.com forward slash verse Lewis. I just look for Bindings Demo there. So let's quickly recap what we did here. We created a simple Cocoa application and uh, selected core data, so that's very important. We added an entity, uh, anything you want, with any properties you like, and we also created subclasses from it. Very important so that Xcode can recognize these things and auto-complete them in Interface Builder. Then we added a table view and an array controller to our very, very simple interface, and we've even added an add and a remove button and hooked them up to the array controller as well, so we could insert things. We even added a little text field for easier text editing. And then we did some binding, some serious binding. We bound the array controller to the managed object context. And then we bound the table view to the array controller. And we also bound the text field to the array controller. And the add and remove button to the array controller. And that's all there was to it. Created a simple application didn't write any code, yet it's functional. And these are amazing apps that you can create for data entry for an iOS app, because of course the core data store is totally interchangeable between Coco and iOS. I hope you like this little introduction to Coco bindings. It's one of those features that if you didn't know it existed, you think, oh my God, I could do so much in regards to Mac development. I hope they're gonna bring this feature to iOS. They haven't yet, and you know, here's hoping. One of those things. If you like this video, please share it with friends and family and random strangers. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Bye for now.